Hello friends, my name is Kyle, Real Revelations Everywhere. In this video, we are going to talk about how you can build your character yourself to fit your play style, to do with how you want to go about excelling at the games that you care about. You really don't need to go straight to guides to find out what the meta, whatever it is, is at the time. You can be a part of why the meta changes, but you have to be willing to do some of the legwork yourself. You don't have to sit there with a calculator, just running the numbers for days and days on end just to figure anything out. It really is a lot more simple than that. and. Just being thoughtful about how you want to do it is so much of just figuring out that the confidence is there for you to take. It is right there. You can do it yourself. It is not that hard. The people that do all of this stuff, they aren't sitting there just breaking calculators, fucking smashing the keys as fast as they can. Obviously, knowing how to do the math is important, but that stuff comes with the interest of building your own character. If you have no interest in building your own character, you're never going to figure out so much about the way that you want to do stuff and the way that you want to interact with these games, which in my mind is beyond important. You doing your thing in these games and figuring out your play style and you being yourself when you're doing all of this stuff is absolutely way too important to just ignore and allow everyone else to tell you how the game should be played. That is not a healthy way to interact with the game. It's not a healthy way to Critically think for yourself. That's not a way to build up your own play style and your own repertoire. It is extremely lazy and it is way more detrimental than you realize. I'm not saying there isn't a place for guides anywhere. Obviously, there is. And there's always people that are going to be more well informed than you in general. And sure, you can take their advice, but you got to take it with a grain of salt. You got to go figure this stuff out for yourself. You have to do the due diligence for yourself if you want to be the reason that you are getting better. And if you want to be the best that you can, you need to be the reason that you are getting better. It is very important. And when you spend all of your time playing video games like this, it's really important to make sure that you are spending your time successfully. And when I say successfully, not like you're making a bunch of money off of it. That doesn't fucking matter. You need to be having fun doing what you want to do. That's what's important. And when you see my thought process going through this character, you're going to realize, well, fuck. I can, not only can I do that myself, I can do way better than that. You surely can. This is my first character. I did not look up any meta builds. I didn't look up a list of all of the items in the game and I checked each one that I want and I'm going through lists of best in slot. That didn't happen. This character was the first one that I made. It's not even level cap yet. But I have had an absolute blast playing this character. Like... It's, it was just so easy watching everything come together because I had a good idea of what I was going for as I got the stuff that I got. All of the items that I got on this character had to be earned by this character. So I was starting from scratch. There was no huge overarching theme or game plan going on. I just allowed the build to come to me in a sense. I had a good idea of what I like to do and how I like to go about it and what I think would be successful. But that is, those are variables that you determine. Everybody's got their own way to go about it. You figure out your way and what makes sense to you. And you can make it work, especially in a game like this. So real fast, 
I want to try to do this as quickly as possible. I want to go over mostly the synergy between all of the abilities, because that is really what defines my thought process. So first things first, in a game like this, an ARPG, I always think of it as a racing game. I am trying to get from one end of the map to the other, whatever that map is, whatever it looks like, I'm trying to get there as fast as possible. Speed is absolutely imperative in pretty much any ARPG build. I can't imagine why it wouldn't be. I don't know. I think it's going to be a really good lesson that you figure out for yourself when you try to make a build that doesn't go fast and you see how poorly that goes over time. So with that in mind, I want to start with Shift. Shift is an ability that is very common in rogue builds for a lot of good reasons. And there are certain things that I am looking for in an ability like Shift. I want it to do a lot of stuff for me. I want it to do as many different things as possible because this is an ability that I am hitting constantly. Three and a half second cooldown. I'm basically holding it down. I just want it to be going. I want it to happen often, 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 often. Always moving, always going. But I don't just want movement out of it. There's a lot that this ability could do for me. And with 20 points, obviously, we can get pretty far across this tree. Is this completely optimal? I'm going to go with, of fucking course not. <laughs> this is not completely optimized for meta gameplay at the highest level. That's not where this character is at. That's not what I'm concerned with right now with this character. That really is not a part of this conversation to be had. That's a totally different that is a whole series unto itself. What we're going for here is a lot of stuff that I need right now. And there are a lot of synergies within Shift. So I'm going to open this real fast. You'll notice that my damage profile is increased damage over time, increased poison damage, increased fire damage with ignite chance, physical damage with bleed chance, I am bow attacks specifically because I've converted explosive trap. I am specifically looking for damage over time. So with that specifically in mind, because I have gotten so much to do with poison and dot damage from all of the stuff that I've chosen to craft up, to, I have based my DPS profile on dot damage. That informs a ton of decisions. When I light stuff up, it's just going to melt. I don't need to be around for that. So when I'm moving fast, I just want to apply and go. That is all I am concerned with. And that does very well for me. It has hid a lot of my defensive deficiencies for a really long time. Because I'm just not around for them to hit me back as much as possible. So there we go. I've gotten a lot of damage over time stuff. There is a lot to do with poison and fire and bleed with rogues. So it's a strong place to start. There's a lot to work with. There's a lot to develop in that area. There is a lot to know with the way that dot damage operates. So, real fast, let's go to... Hit versus damage over time. Two different ways as a hit or damage over time. A damage over time effect deals damage to a target or area repeatedly over duration. The most common sources of damage over time are ailments, just ignite, bleed, and poison. We're working all three. I, I'm just taking as much, as many dots as I can. I just want to be applying all the time. There are also damage over time effects that damage all targets within an area. Any source of damage that is not damage over time is considered a hit. Those damaging skills include a hit. Hits can be dodge blocked or turned into a glancing blow, and there are many other effects that trigger either. Damage over time cannot be mitigated by most defensive mechanics, except for resistances. Damage over time cannot critically strike and does not trigger on-hit effects, such as health gained on-hit. So there we have it, right there. 
huge amount of limiting factors that we are not going to play around. What we do want to play around to make our dots more effective are resistance penetration. So we are not critting and we're not triggering on hit effects. So if we take a look at this, crit strike chance 5%. Makes sense. Not putting a bunch of extra stats into shit that I don't need, right? So that's going to inform a lot of decisions and make a lot of stuff very straightforward when we are going through our talents. We don't need to waste any extra points. We have 20. And I'm sure you already noticed, there are many more spots than 20 to get to. A lot of it, really, when we know what we're going for, these become very simple, easy decisions that are easily recognized as deficient choices that we just simply understand that has no use for me. And getting rid of all of the unuseful stuff, refining your build, and ditching anti-synergies, and just constantly reevaluate each point is going to help you make your builds just as good, if not better, than a lot of these other meta builds. It's That's what they are doing. That's what they are doing. That's it. They just are constantly refining and seeing how it feels, and then they marry that with the results, the reality, the math. You have to establish what you're going for first. The math comes later. Once you have a bunch of stuff and you have developed the build worry about that stuff later what feels good make your buttons feel good first make them fun to use make it that version of the lightning blast and you're like holy shit that was cool sith lord over here whatever whatever you want make it look the way that you want make it feel the way that you want the numbers will come you can tinker with all of that and there are a ton of levers to operate with that's one of the main reasons I'm not going over the talent trees is because all of this stuff is supplementary in my mind. This stuff you can figure out based off of what we already just figured out. Like all of this stuff is just like dot damage and poison bleed chance and stuff like that. A lot of it needs to be reverted to defensive stuff. That stuff is supplementary to your play style. So we are going to focus on that. Shift does a lot. Healing, that's fine. But we have to connect to get to this over here. Got a couple extra points. Chance at poison. That stuff makes sense. But real fast, why would I do something like just put two points there when I could have extended into one of these other two? Well, if we know what we already know, is I just want as many dots as possible. Gaining one extra stack from this is a lot better than one point in a crit multiplier, one point in a little extra dot damage conditionally when only when I consume a jade arrow. Like, I just want more stacks right now. If we get more gear and we start fleshing out, well, I'm just playing around jade arrow and poison damage and I want the initial it's to start doing more, then I can start reassociating what I'm going for to crit multiplication and stuff like that. But then the dot damage is taking a backseat. So that's a wholesale change at that point. So it's just small stuff like this and then over investing into stuff like this cleanses ailments. That is a great effect. I would love to have that. But if I have to overinvest to get in it, but I, and then I'm losing stuff that I'll explain is a strong synergy later on, it really doesn't do that much for me. So I'm overinvesting in stuff like distance reduction and cooldown increase because everything towards the end of trees, not everything, but a lot of stuff starts to have a heavier cost to the benefit you really, it all adds up. So, then we take stuff like Mana Regained. Now, Shift, giving me movement speed buffs. But not only that, 
You'll notice down here, potion used below 50%. Stuff like that, where I can just hit one pointers in a section that I am already heavily invested in, and it has a somewhat similar defensive effect. I'm going to take that over over investing in stuff like this way up here. When I think about shift, we want to go fast. It's something that I'm always pressing, so I want a lot of good effects associated with it. When I'm getting stuff like buff duration on speed boosts, one and a half seconds doesn't sound like much, but you'll notice I have a lot of one or two points here and there in a lot of other movement speed stuff. A lot of other movement speed options that interact with the different abilities that I have that all add up to my total move speed economy, what I can afford to go as fast as I can as often as I can. This stuff, like momentum, that is what I'm talking about when I say you have to feel talent points. This stuff, like emergency flask, this is the stuff that you feel. This is the stuff that you have to notice when it goes off in-game and you're like, holy crap. These two, I'm sure, have saved my life more times than I even could count. I have wholly, entirely lost track of how useful these two talents have been for me because their effects occur so often. And like that's really what I'm going for with shift. I know this is just a constantly occurring thing, so I want to stack as many effects that are just going to be useful when they're constantly going. So it's stuff like mana gain when I'm below half health and Potion use below half health. This game moves so quickly that you just, all of your health just, at least mine does, very quickly. I could lose 90% of my health very easily. I don't know about you guys, but that is not very hard for me. Stuff like this, where it just fills in the gaps, where it just is automatically going, and you don't have to, if it can reduce the overall amount of things that you have to pay attention to and focus on and react to it is going to be very useful but that's something that you have to feel that's part of the feel of your play style a lot of people might not need that one point over there and then they can throw three points in the jade arrow or they can throw three points into that or they can get an extra point in something they're already invested in dodge rating for decks i could surely use that so that kind of thing is something that is not just cut and dry. No, you shouldn't take it. Yes, you should. Your play style, the way that you do it. Invulnerability while shifting. So in that amount of time that I'm shifting, I actually gain iframes. That is gigantic. So now something that I am pressing every three and a half seconds is giving me a third of my mana back, is automatically pressing potions for me, and I become invincible in that moment. And you'll see I just did a bunch of other shit with it as well. So now that we've established how effective an ability this is defensively, what are we getting out of the offense? So look at that, boom. Already built in to the paths that I have already heavily invested in absolutely stellar talent tree for this build i love all of this stuff so we'll move on we already talked about that one acid flask on departure and on arrival 50 percent per point so i got two in each to make sure that it is always happening obviously damage over time 400 percent poison damage 430 percent just because i'm not heavily invested into acid flask doesn't mean that those talents aren't really, really useful for me. So we have our damage profile. Well, you would think, oh, well, if I'm not specced into Acid Flask, do I really want to spend four points on that? But then I realize 
what you're going to realize is very quickly as we go through explosive trap, which is going to be next, is like I said before, I want to get in, apply, and leave. That is all that I am concerned about. What happens beyond that is up to those mobs that are melting into a puddle a mile away from me. Doesn't concern me anymore. I'm a mile that way. I'll circle back around if something does concern me. I want to apply and go. These talents, this four guaranteed huge applications, especially the way that I use it, easy choices. Apply and go. It's something that automatically happens every four seconds. Apply and go. Easy. So now we come back over here and we got three one pointers in this. Just a whopper section. Three one pointers in a row. That's a big deal. So now. These must be pretty good. We're thinking about apply and go. So this must directly involve that, right? You leave behind a shadow at the place you shifted from. Well, what does that actually do for me? Because shadows in a lot of other rogue builds are very useful things to play around, and you can do a lot with them with a lot of different abilities, but this ability set doesn't do a ton with shadow, so why would I want that? I'm investing two whole points into after using shift, you use shadow cascade. Well, what is that? Physical melee area requires dual wielding. We're not even dual wielding. So what is this? Why would I want that? I'm not specced in the shadow cascade. I'm, this isn't doing anything extra for me. I can't scale it. Well, this is one of the main synergies that I identified that I personally really enjoy about this build. And we'll go straight into it. It's right over here. And say, okay, well, what did we take to get to it? 10 plus damage, 10 plus 10% damage, and two fire resistance shred stacks. Fire damage, not bad. Bow damage with this ability once we identify that part of the tree. Not terrible, but really not what we are mainly invested in. So what does this talent do? Whenever you hit an enemy with any melee attack, you attach an explosive trap to that enemy. And now you'll notice, obviously, we are fully invested in explosive traps, so this thing is going to this is going to do a lot for us. So now we have involved our one of our main applicators in our movement ability. That's really exciting for me. And you'll see how it starts to play out. That is a lot of just free ass damage. It really is. And it all adds up, especially with a play style like this where I want to know that I have applied as much as I can in the shortest amount of time, another application of explosive shot happening all the time for free off of two points, branching off of something I was extremely heavily invested in that is very efficient. That is, I believe, a powerful synergy. And it cost me five points total, not even, technically four. Because this could have been less than three to get to that. So technically five, but not really because I was going to put three in there the whole time. So now, boom, I jump and that big red slash puts an explosive trap on someone. That pops again and that starts rapidly firing off all of the other stuff that I have with explosive trap. Let's take a look at that. Throws a trap. That explodes when triggered, takes 0.4 seconds to arm and explode, or after 30 seconds. That sounds awful. That is not how I want to use this ability. That sounds terrible. I do not want anything to do with these traps 30 seconds later. That sounds like wasted mana. Can't afford to do that. And as I start to explain this ability, you're going to realize the mana cost is one of the main limiting factors and managing my mana economy with this build and making sure that I have the right cadence and I'm using abilities the right way is going to be the number one limiting factor. So we'll realize as we develop this ability, something that I realized over time as I was leveling is that this ability went from my right click that is just, you know, my fucking main 
outside of just you know the regular stuff it's not just my main applicator it costs it is beginning to cost way too much as i invest more into it so it has to be used in a much more intentional way so you'll notice as i go through all of these damaging abilities their purposes over time start to fill different roles and evolve as your build goes on it's something that you're gonna have to think about is what is the best way for me to cast all of these abilities what order should i be casting them in when am i picking and choosing to use this ability over this ability because that's these are all decisions that i've had to be very conscious about or otherwise i just rip a bunch of explosive shots off and then all of a sudden i can't do anything i just press shift 10 times and when i'm not shifting i'm just wandering i'm just walking i'm just a regular ass dude just walking around that can't happen i can't just be walking around i'm made of paper mache i need to be sprinting not walking so when i am on the move I have to make sure that I can always be sprinting. I gotta make sure that I am keeping my rotation in check. Otherwise, I can't use any of my abilities then. And how useful does that sound? Very not useful. That was, or worse than that. Maybe some cuss words. That's what it actually is. How do you cast all of your abilities together? That's the thought that has to be constantly weaved in between all of your decisions. Well, if I make this choice over here and I'm all of a sudden this ability costs 26, 27 extra mana, well then holy shit, now I'm up to 31 and I can only cast it five times before I am fucking completely dry. And you'll notice all of this stuff isn't chaining like all of the talents say that it will. So there is actually a lot more hidden cost within a lot of synergies that you have to be very intentional about. A lot of this stuff costs something when you cast it. That's actually one of the biggest things about this is in this tooltip, it doesn't specifically state a certain portion of the mana cost needs to be used, which is one of the things that makes this work so well is it is not requiring a portion of Shadow Cascade every time I shift. So shift actually is about 15 mana outside of, you know, a portion of, I don't even think it costs the Acid Blast cost, which is even more ridiculous. I'm pretty sure... So then we look at the mana cost when shifting. 15. That's huge. Knowing that it's just 15 and that I pretty much always have that when I'm playing properly is one of the things that makes this possible. And then you'll notice explosive trap. Every time all of this stuff starts triggering, there is a hidden cost within it that actually makes it almost twice as expensive, if not more than that. I'll hit this one time, and if it fully chains and does all of the stuff that I am asking it to do with all of these talents, it actually costs way closer to twice as much. And then that's just, that's fucking all of my mana in like two seconds. If I just accidentally press explosive shot too many times, which does happen when I'm not paying attention, it costs so, 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 so much that it breaks everything else and what I'm going for. So you really gotta be intentional with the how things are cast together because it's your whole kit that comes together with all of this stuff. So we'll see real fast. Max traps, great talent, even more traps, but with further investment, basically double the mana cost at where it's at. This is basically half of the mana cost, but it's also necessary to get to boom, 
perhaps rain you shoot arrows that's what's making them go up into the air like that so it's a bow attack now so i'm scaling it the way that i want to and i'm also using it in a much more effective way in my mind for my play style because I mean, my play style is not fucking sitting behind the bush and like, he's gonna step into it any second now i don't care i want this shit to come down and i want it to be done i want the damage to activate i want the dots to be rolling asap and i also really don't want to be throwing traps down and just have it not straight up just hit the wrong shit it's going to be like one baby skeleton that like trips in the opposite direction and the whole pack just walks past it can't afford that not going to allow it to happen in the first place so i'm always just boom here we go easy investment it gives me more of what i want makes a ton of sense and increased stun chance why not arming time is ignored so once we realize this is how we want to use it a lot of this other stuff is going to not make any sense to take and it's going to be really very straightforward once we realize that this is just our applicator this is not the best explosive trap build that there is for explosive trap explosive trap is one of the best applicators that i have found for this build there's the difference it's not I'm making an explosive trap build and I have a bunch of dot stuff. It's I have a bunch of dot stuff. That's how I want to play. I'm starting to get the gear that makes sense for my play style. So I'm going to lean into that. Now, how do I put the most dots on everything? That's where whatever your right click is or whatever button you use, whatever you think your main applicator is, is up to your play style the way that you want to feel it you are going to be able to apply a lot with a lot of different abilities. This is how I want to apply it. That's the difference. It doesn't need to be, well, explosive trap just does a fucking ton of damage and then I got dots rolling and then all this stuff. You'll see when I show you, I hit those hits don't do much, but then you see the fucking health bar just chunking as it goes down. Once the dots start rolling, that's all I'm concerned about. But with the extensive mana cost, I really have to consider how it is affecting my play style. So with the give and take, this is the best applicator that I have found with the most good synergies with everything else that I like to use, but they're very specific constraints on how I can use it. So how does that work into the rest of the abilities that I'm using? I'm going to just show you this real fast increased mana cost but now it's a hundred percent trap drop chance off of when another one detonates so now it's going to start chaining and it's going to start reapplying every time it re-hits we're going to take those despite the extra cost it is worth it because we're just trying to apply and our play style is going to compensate for the cost so now we go up here, explosive traps dropped by the trap sprinkler node are instead thrown. So then they become more accurate. Fucking awesome. Love it. And then over here, traps throw acid flasks. So now we are igniting and bleeding with a bow attack and we are also throwing poison. But look at that. See, that's exactly what I was talking about. 70% of acid flask base mana consumption. Every time this goes off, I am now losing seven mana that happens often three times that goes off in one explosive shot that is almost right there has almost doubled my mana cost that happens often because i want it to so now we're taking that into account the real cost of your kit not like just face value not really caring uh well this is where you bust out the mental calculator and you say, well, shit, that math was not hard. You don't need to fucking get your TI-8700 IBC, whatever the fuck, out. Right there. Well, shit, I basically just doubled my mana cost. Think about that every time you press it. When you realize that you pressed it too many times and you see your mana down, that is important feedback for your play style. Well, shit, I can't do that again. 
So now, are you really developing the rest of your kit around what you have established? First things first, you might have noticed I'm a falconer. So, I'm going to need falconry. Summons a falcon that fights with you. That is what allows all of the other falcon abilities to operate. So this is basically necessary. Otherwise, don't <laughs> pick falconer. Pretty much that simple. If you want to be a no falcon falconer and you have found the most specific angle possible and you can make it work, sure. But generally, we're going for the most synergy as possible, and I find it hard to believe that you're going to make the best Falcon build without Falconry. So let's just progress from there. Falcon Strikes. Falcon rapidly hits as many enemies in the target area. So I'm defining and aiming him in active areas. So that's going to affect the way that we use him. It's not just a full screen-wide thing. It's not just tethered to me. It is an AoE nuke that I am establishing when I am going to use it. It doesn't cost the most mana ever, but that is not cheap. 35, that's a solid amount that I could absolutely get in trouble with casting the wrong time. So, once again, one of the main limiting factors is mana economy. It is being very intentional with how I'm using this ability. Big ass nuke, but it's also a passive, so a lot of the talents are affecting my Falcon passively, but it's also affecting the ability specifically. So we really have to determine what are we doing when we're hitting them and using the passive, and what are we actually scaling on our Falcon? Because a lot of this stuff is, we'll see, Physical melee for the minion tag, minion companion dexterity. So, a lot of this stuff isn't going to scale him as clean. We're, I just want clean, well-meaning scaling. I want stuff that is going to supplement my damage profile, because he's just constantly going in between hitting all of this stuff, so he's kind of helping finish everything off, but he's also one of my main applicators. So what are we going for? Is it the power of his hits as they land? Or are we using him once again as an applicator and just gaining buffs? First damage or damage over time? Think you know the answer so knowing our damage profile and understanding how we want to use him a lot of this stuff becomes really obvious and a lot of the stuff that we don't take becomes really obvious so real fast let's start up top what did we take whenever the falcon hits an enemy with falcon strikes the active on this it marks them my next hit against a marked target deals more damage and consumes the mark 150% chance. That's just good damage, and it happens all the time. For free. I really like this buff, and it gets me a lot of other stuff, as you will see right now. Another move speed buff with a small duration. So that's another one of the one points here, one point there, that fills in my overall move speed ability. So, and you'll realize the feel of all of this stuff, it adds up very, very quickly and very effectively. Filling in your move speed with stuff that is going to happen passively is going to make such a big difference, especially over time. You aren't even going to be able to realize how much stuff you are dodging by just moving that much faster for that much longer. It, you have to feel it. It really, really adds up. So real fast, Falcon Strikes, Falcon Chance to Inflict Falconer's Mark with other hits. 40%, I love it. it. Happens all the time. One point over here, this could totally be repurposed, but it's just something that I was 
experimenting with at the time. When you consume a Falcon's Mark, your Falcon gains additional melee damage equal to, so it's his melee damage equal to a portion of my scaling, depending on what type of ability that I use. So this would be bow damage. I'm not ultra scaling bow, but 171% is really, that's nothing to scoff at. That is a good addition for one point. If I, it works the way that I think it works, and it stacks as well, and I'm consuming that mark all the time for just a couple, three points, that's great. That's great. It doesn't always, it's not just off of our best scaling, but this still does a lot for us for a minimal investment off of something that I was going to take. I love it. Happens all the time, happens automatically. Beautiful. I can't imagine I wouldn't take a lot of this stuff and you'll think, okay, hold on, we're while you just said it, right off of a point that I'm already invested in. So hold on, these right here, they look pretty familiar. And you would be right. So now let's read. Your Falcon now throws Acid Blast for you. Acid Blast thrown by the Falcon scale with your stats and your Acid Blast tree, but you can, but you can't, but can apply Falcon's Mark. So it does all of this stuff, scales with how we're scaling it, and it also works with marking strikes. Sounds amazing. Except we are not actually throwing Acid Blasts. We are not directly activating the acid flask button the way that we use it is just simply an applicator and the way that i understand it i do not believe that this synergy would work well for it so i don't think this interaction is what we're looking for i don't we're not invested into the acid flask tree like that so it really is not that pertinent to me if it doesn't work that way, if it would be a great synergy, I would love for someone to tell me that. And I just might have to experiment myself, but I believe that would not be how it would work because I'm not actually determining where the acid blast is being thrown. I'm not pressing it directly myself. I don't think that's how it works. So this doesn't actually work for us, unfortunately. But with a great acid flask falcon rebuild, I have an extremely hard time believing that you wouldn't want this stuff. Sounds great. But unfortunately, just misses the mark for us. So with that logic, really can't use it that well. Real fast, I wanna make a specific point about some anti-synergies real fast. And I wanna make a point about relevant scaling for the point that you are at in the game and it is very well explained right here in just a few talents i would like to think so this guy up here big old one pointer right off of a great talent that we are going to take what is this guy consuming a falcon's mark instantly recovers falcon strikes cooldown but now it costs additional mana it almost doubles the mana cost and it gives me it back immediately. I'm going to trigger this all the time. Sounds pretty fucking awesome for a lot of other builds. But for me, this would absolutely annihilate my mana economy. I would have this button up all the time and I would never be able to press it. How ironic is that? That's fucking awful <laughs> that would be so 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 bad for me to take that and you think about well it's like this huge one pointer that's so close to really good stuff and it's like how can you not make that work you might be able to but i can't because knowing what i know about the mana costs that i have incurred with the other decisions i've made this would totally destroy the flow of my kit but then you take a look at other talents that I already have, like this one. When you directly use a melee throwing or bow attack and hit at least one enemy, you reduce a portion of Falcon Strike's remaining cooldown. 
that triggers all the time, I'm not incurring a huge mana increase cost and I'm getting it as often as I could even use it in the first place. So I haven't totally fucked up the cadence of the ability and the cost of it. And I was already going to take stuff that was running through that talent anyways. So why the fuck would I not? It makes no sense to not just take this instead affords me the exact same thing, but way better. And it still keeps this functioning within the ecosystem of my kit. I'm going to keep the ecosystem healthy. Got to make sure that the cycle is strong, that everything can be pressed whenever I need to press it. And that just because it has a whatever 11 and a half second cooldown, that's not a bad thing. I'm not using this more often than that. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be trying to. Because that's really like, it's already over halfway up and I just used it. It basically got done and it was a quarter of the way through already almost i don't need it to come up faster than that so that is really the kind of anti-synergy that you have to weed out that stuff seems like a great big old one pointer but it really does not help when you understand what you're going for and it's done way better by an investment that i've already made easy this guy real quick Falcon damage per level plus one percent. Falcon damage per dex. So I got like almost 30, 34 dex. 34% on top of 84%. Absolutely incredible. I think I'm sure they just put this here just to make it something that is completely unavoidable to naturally scale your Falcon appropriately. Seems like great system design. Very intuitive unavoidable for a great reason you shouldn't want to easy take you gotta go somewhere i went both ways amazing ability you don't want as i'm sure a game designer you don't want these choices to ever feel bad so two great choices right out the gate leads to a bunch of other great choices falcon strike applies frailty and slow on screech Frailty only stacks up to three times, so three points in this, automatically fully stacking Frailty, 18% reduced damage dealt from that enemy, stacking that instantly. Absolutely beautiful. And there was a point in time where I actually only had one point in this, and then I had two points in these guys down here, and it was these were just relics of an older build that I just wasn't paying attention to that I wanted to point out real fast. Crit, crit strike, crit multiplier, adding my crit chance to Falcon crit chance. He's not getting any of it. Straight up. These points were just sitting here for the longest time doing absolutely nothing for me. And I didn't realize it. As soon as I took those out, put three into that. Why did that take so long? And it was like that for several levels. Constant reevaluation. Well, shit, is that point really serving me well anymore? Because we only get 20 of these things. Plus, you'll notice that this has plus two to falconry. So as you get gear, it starts to affect what you are even capable of in the first place. Take that into account. Add to it. I get two more points from that helmet. Shit, that's two points. That affords me literally this whole section. That affords me this stuff down here. That affords me two more on top of this. That does a lot for me. That changes the value of my points in other places. These two points were valueless, but then I got plus two from it, and I got two more in there. Now I'm stacking frailty instantly huge stuff and that's just a fucking random hat that i got and that's wholesale changes that you have to consider and that's the fun of it right that's what makes all of this so interesting so now real quick ice increased damage transferred to the falcon sure one pointer leads me to other good stuff absolutely 
Now uses feather knives. And it throws a single feather whenever I consume a falcon's mark. More synergy up here. Extra damage. Fills out my damage profile. Love it. Here we go. Rending Talons. A portion of your bleed, poison, shred armor, shred resistance, and slow on hit. Now also applies to your falcon's hits. 200%. Two stacks on every single hit. That is what we want. Everything else in this tree does not matter if we are not reaching this. Thank God it wasn't hard to reach because this investment is how we use our Falcon, my Falcon specifically. His name is Harvey as well. And yes, he is an attorney. Falcon damage plus 10%. This effect is tripled against moving targets. How often are targets moving? Literally always. Boom. Basically 30% damage for two points. 10% damage for two points is also, I am more than okay with taking it, especially when it comes right off of a talent like this one. And then we got a little extra point over here. What does this do? Black arrow at its location. This happens all the time. What does Dark Quiver do? Summon seven black arrows. 100% increased damage to your next bow attack. This is a one-pointer. It happens all the time. It was just something I was experimenting with that I find it's almost impossible not to just have one that I can just pick up. Stuff like this adds to the feel of your play style, where now it's triggering, okay, well, I have a black arrow, I got a lot of mana, I can use explosive shot. Otherwise, when those conditions aren't met, when I'm playing well and I'm paying attention, I'm not explosive shotting outside of all of these conditions that I have added up to make it worth doing, right? So this being a little one-pointer off to the side, and I'm already right here, it's beautiful. So easy to take. Now, about the scaling at the right point in the game at the right time. Knowing what we know about my damage profile, stuff like this up here, the overall effectiveness of stuff like this is going to change depending on what stage you're going in. If we could not math this real quick, I want to talk about kill threshold. Falcon strikes instantly kill enemies, so it's the active, not just Harvey, instantly kill enemies that are below a health threshold. Stack this all the way up. This one's looking like 16%. If you have a similar effect from an item or passive node, then the highest threshold is used. So if you have a higher kill threshold on something else, this will use that number instead of whatever 16%, however much you've invested in it. So that sounds really good. And then it's right next to another talent branching off of the same one like this. When your Falcon kills an enemy or hits a boss or rare enemy, it restores health and mana to you based on your total attributes. So I would be getting like, quick math, 30, uh, 58, 68, 78, about 100. So that's two and a half mana-ish, and 50 health per time it hits. That's not too shabby, but... It is very, very conditional. When your falcon kills an enemy, that's not happening that often. It really isn't. What we've already talked about, when I'm, I want to apply and I want to leave. My falcon is tethered to me. He's not hanging out back there with all of them, you know, giving them a hug and rubbing their head and shh, I'll be dead soon. As he fucking slits their throat. That's not happening. He's with me. We're moving. We're over there. That stuff is just melting into a puddle. I know it's going to die. It's done. So this is not triggering nearly as much as I would like to think. And also, when you couple it with something like this, it becomes way more effective. So when I don't have stuff like this, it's not triggering nearly as much as I would like it to for the investment. But... Once you get into the later stages of the game, something like this, where almost 20% of a mob's health 
is a fucking gigantic number, but it's not right now. That 20% is going to be gone. I put stuff on, I know it's dead. I've invested so much in damage at this point that my Falcon isn't going to be around. I don't want him to be. That's not his point. I want him up front reapplying more, more, more application. He's not sticking around to cover all of that. That's not the purpose of what we're going for. This stuff is not that helpful right now. But later on in the game, when everything has a jillion billion health, 20% of a jillion billion is like a Fostilla Googillion. So that effectiveness of that two points right there is just an exponential increase as the difficulty goes. So right now, that's really not that great for me. But Kill Threshold is still really great stuff, just not right now. That's what I want to point out. And then leading through it with even more investment, honestly, a borderline irrelevant what this stuff does for me. I know it is Falcon Strikes to a line attack, really doesn't do anything for me over the circle, makes it wider, damage after area skill use plus 20%, that's fine, but that is scaling the damage of Falcon Strikes. That's not what we are trying to scale, physical melee. That's not what we're scaling. We want it to apply. We are applying with it. So this stuff doesn't do anything for me. Really doesn't. Now, I want to talk about Dive Bomb and Decoy. Hand in hand. These two skills in this kit have been married together. This is what has become my the main part of my rotation. It really is shift and then dive bomb my decoy shift dive bomb my decoy and you'll understand very soon why that is the case first things first i have decided this is how i want to use it this is what needs to happen as often as possible i have to detonate my decoy with my dive bomb bottom line that is the most effective version of this interaction. Why is that? Well, it's all the stuff that I have built up around it. Mana gain on boss or rare hit. 12 mana back every time I use it on a boss or a rare. That happens all the fucking time. And the talent right before it. Mana cost reduction. We, you could get rid of that plus 8% damage and I would still require this talent. Minus eight gets me to four. Four mana is something that I always have. Four mana isn't something that is going to fuck up my mana economy. Four mana is very, very reliable on a just under five second cooldown. So every five seconds, I have to use this just for the mana economy alone what this does for me costs me nothing gets me a ton of mana back i get into a troubling situation and i shift away i get a ton of my mana back a lot of my mana economy is handled automatically through the decisions that were really easy to make once i felt my play style come together easy one pointer cooldown recovery speed why not good for anyone dive bombs hits cause enemies to bleed Easy stack gets me over to this. Shadow Falcons. I don't create a ton of shadows, but I do create enough to use this effectively because of how much I use Dive Bomb. And I've only invested into it up to what I can even manage in the first place. I don't think I could make more than three shadows at a time intentionally anyways. So I'm not going five into this. And I'm not going into the rest of the tree because it doesn't make sense. We look at it. Umbral Blades, not using it. Smoke Bomb, not using it. Those are great abilities, but not for this build. Shadow Falcon for my primary attack. I don't want that. So what is this one point down here? Dusk Shroud stacks from Shadow Falcons. Dusk Shroud, Dusk Shroud is one of those things that a lot of rogues are stacking in a lot of different ways. Just like us. 
one more easy thing that happens automatically and it just adds little points at a time stuff like move speed stuff like extra defenses it is going to save you way more than you realize is this fully optimized probably not but does it do what i needed to do right now sure it has it's not detrimental and there are not just four other points that are just shit i could go boom 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 and just ditch this guy except what we're going to get into real fast over here slow stacks that's fine physical resistance shred stacks that's also fine whatever crimson shroud stacks beautiful increased bleed chance and what was the and reduced whoops there it was right there plus 50 percent bleed chance and five percent less damage taken over time for four seconds so this is basically having this stacked up is what reduces my damage over time taken that's one of the only ways to do that so i got to make sure i'm stacking in multiple ways just like dust shroud stacking that multiple ways too one point in that it's easy for me but it also got me over from here reduced delay 36 percent having two points right there is part of the fine tuning that i have done this easy small investment gets me a lot none of this gets me much based off of crit and a lot of other stuff that i don't want to heavily invest in this is a lot of points to get a good amount of these effects out of it and they really don't concern me if i detonate it with ex if i detonate explosive traps with eye bomb doesn't ever happen move speed based off of talon blades i'm not getting talon blades like that because i'm not even getting feather fall because i don't want to invest in all of this other stuff so you go into small stuff like this that's super effective add to your defenses somehow it doesn't have to just make everything hit super hard but it's something that i'm using all the time so it's something that i know is going to come with all of this stuff and then hit damage per bleed so now i'm boosting how much dive bomb does up front based off of how much i have stacked up on it and then i re-add bleeds afterwards so this is just do this is doing a whole ton of good stuff to do with everything else that we've already established and then we go over to decoy what is decoy getting us well i want you to hold on to this reduced delay because that number just like this minus eight mana cost is extremely extremely important to the way that this build feels so we go over to decoy i'm gonna go right up here first things first we can create shadows already works with our other shadow stuff easy one pointer off of something we are already taking final explosion damage sure that's what we're going for final explosion damage works but this is reducing the duration that it is out for that is an extremely important number that is the one that i had to fine tune over everything else to make sure that this interaction worked so real fast i'm going to come down well so fast two stacks applied easy two points i'm sure i could put those points somewhere else that could be a better refinement but gives a stack of ignite automatically i enjoy that maybe i take out of something else and add more into that has to be developed but right now it's two stacks easy choice mana efficiency easy choice frailty and armor shred whenever i throw it out pretty easy choice and then it gets me to this added haste duration when i get hit with the sonic wave another one pointer that just adds to my overall move speed very useful but down here this is where all of the real fine tuning has been done so i know this has taken away half of the duration that it is just out for which has shortened my time the window that i have to hit it with dive bomb very important interaction i need it to be reliable so we come down here Damage reflected doesn't do a ton for us because it's not out for that long. But it gets us this. Very necessary cost to this. 
another charge. So that's why it has two white dots down here, because I can throw two, get a second charge, but the cooldown is always rolling on one, even if I'm holding one. So it just makes the cooldown for it that much better. It is that much more available for dive bombs. So even though it's not out for very long, as you saw, the damage reflected isn't doing a ton, but it's a necessary cost to get to this easy decision make. And it also puts me right here, duration plus 40%, but with a cost, also final explosion damage. That's great. Added cooldown. That is a reasonable cost to all of this benefit, especially when I've already taken this. But I have to fine tune this because of the relic that I've got. So as the items come in, you fine tune the talents around what the game has given you to work with. 88% reduced decoy duration. That is an extreme limitation. I am I'm left with 10%. 10% left of my window. And when I had this at first, and then I just had the, uh, I already had this, so minus 45% of that minus 10%, or of that 10% remaining, made it so that this thing was literally, you couldn't even see the green bar. But, you see, what I have refined it back to is now I have that window i have that timing i know that i can hit as they meet i can get them to appear at the same place at the same time with the timing that i have established through fine tuning my talents that is where the fine tuning creates the good feeling everything else in the build revolves around that interaction right there, me doing that properly makes everything else work. And when everything is working, it works pretty fucking well. And so knowing all of that real fast, this is the general gist of what we're going for. Then we take it and we put it into action. So what does it look like? I don't even want to be worried about what gear drops. I just want to go. What does it look like when it all comes together? Does it feel good to use all of this stuff? We hop in here, first things first. I do not want to just start pressing explosive shot like crazy. I don't, do you see how fast their health goes down? I have not been standing next to them. They don't get the chance to hit me. Harvey can do his thing back there, keep reapplying, but I'm just gonna keep going now. Really don't need to worry about all of this extra shit. Just wanna get everything kind of rounded up and then we let it melt. How much damage is shift going to do to all of that? Look at that. Two acid flasks dropped. I'm just walking around. Harvey's handling stuff for me. The dots are handling stuff for me. Stuff is going to die. So now, knowing that, I just keep on moving. I go and grab the important stuff that I want to see on the map. Shrines, the chests. Where is the objective? Where are the bone spires? Just keep going. Just keep going. I didn't even see those standing there. Fucked up my uh, dive bomb right there. It's not a hard thing to do. But just keep moving. Really don't need to be hanging out with all that stuff. And then we start mixing in dive bombs. And we shift. All right? And then we mix in a dive bomb. And then we shift. And just as we go, mix in a dive bomb. And then we shift. And we just keep finding where the map is leading. There's nothing over here. So we go back down. Now it's showing us where the objective is since we're closer. Shift. We mix in a dive bomb real fast. Get our mana back. Stay mana topped. Because as soon as I start using all of this stuff, you'll notice, look how fast my mana just disappeared. That was three explosive shots, and I was in the negative for three seconds straight. When shit just actually is difficult, unlike this, that is me walking around like a normal fucking guy. That earns me nothing good. So I just want to keep on moving. Shift. And then when I shift on time, my move speed, all of the small points that I have picked up, they all start to flow together. They all start to combine in effectiveness. So it's now not just 
fifty percent for one and a half seconds. It's that, and then the next one triggers, and then the next one triggers, and then all of a sudden you have two of them going at the same time, and then you're just cruising, and you can maintain that speed. You can just keep doing that. So now we got a big guy, and we got to start using all of our stuff. So what does it look like? Well, right now. Nothing's happening to him because look at that seven poison, three bleed. Nothing's really going on. But you'll notice once we really start getting it ramped up, look how fast his health goes away. I pressed two buttons. I used all of my mana, but it took two buttons for me to know for a fact that that guy is going to die. So now when I know for a fact that guy is going to die, do I need to stand right next to him and give him a bear hug? Or can I just literally just leave? I hope you realize you can just leave. You don't need to still be there. You don't even need to be on the same screen as them. That's what I'm going for. I would just want to go fast. I don't want to be around for when they die. I just want to leave. And then I dive bomb and then I shift. And I just keep on pulling all of them together. I dive bomb. And then I shift. So now, look at this. It's corridors. We, I don't get big old sweeping circles anymore. What does it look like? Well, I tell you what. I am not just going to shift straight back into that group that I already was attacking. I'm just going to let them come to me over time. One thing specifically about a skill like shift... The power in it was me running away from them at max fucking speed. You don't want to shift into the middle of all of these mobs and stand there for them. You don't want to get stuck in a group of mobs. You want to shift past them and move away from them. Being next to them gets you nothing. So then... Once you realize how you're doing your damage and how you want to go about it and the abilities that you want to use, then you build the play style around it. What are the inherent advantages of what you're going for? Do I need to fucking just stand there and pummel them with my fists? Obviously, that's not what we're going for. So being in melee range doesn't do anything for me. I could literally just run in this circle over and over if I wanted to and just never be next to any of them. And then all of this shit just melts for me. And then I throw in a fucking decoy dive bomb. And then I shift. And I throw in a decoy dive Even if it's just small circles. Don't be standing inside of them on top of shit. Even if it's just small circles. Put that distance. Don't let them just walk them in circles. Don't allow them to just stand in the same spot and just be buffering their autos on you. Walk them around, and as you walk them around, you group them all together. And then you hit as many of them as you can with the same abilities. That's what allows you to use the least amount of ability to kill and do the most amount of damage. That is effective speed. That is another aspect of the speed that you are affecting, and you're trying to be as safe as you can the entire time. Your play style becomes very obvious when you have a good idea what you're going for. And it's all about what you want to do. This build, this build just happened. As I realized how I wanted to play the game and how I wanted to interact with it, this build just created itself almost. Obviously, there was a lot of diligence on my end. A lot of thoughtfulness went into what I decided to go for, but that's very accomplishable by anyone. It really is just how much do you care about this character? You can do this. Like I said before, not only can you do this, you can do way better than this. This is just a starting point. I know I am going to do way better than this, but it's going to be what I do with it. I don't care where it lands on some meta tier list or where I'm going to end up on the ladder. I am going to have fun playing this character. I did it my way. Everything else to do with what everyone else is. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm going to climb the ladder. Got to max arena out. Got to do all this stuff. 
Go for it. That's all you. That has nothing to do with me. I am way too busy having way too much fun doing my own thing to concern myself solely with the meta and what everyone else, well, they got this fucking, this one uh, play dancer build. Is like, why would you play this when you could play that play dancer build? Like, because I'm playing this, because I'm doing my thing. I'm having a ton of fun on my own. Don't care. You do your own thing. That is how you are going to have the most fun. It doesn't matter about keeping up with everyone else. It does not matter about being the best all time. If you're not having fun doing your own thing, none of that shit matters. That's what's going to burn you out on an incredible game like this, where you can do your own thing. That is what's going to make this game not seem as great as it is. Do your own thing. Make it your build your way. Make it work. Critically think about your own stuff. And as always, you gotta be safe. You gotta stay dangerous. You gotta take it easy. You gotta be good to yourself. Just let it take as much time as it has to. There's no rushing. There's no fucking gotta, 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 like, oh, I don't wanna fucking do that. I gotta do that. And then it pertains to what everyone else thinks. That shit doesn't matter. Do your own thing. Play your own way. That's what does. Thank you for being who you are supposed to be and doing it your way. Really appreciate it.